Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the laws of light. Light has three very simple laws. The first law is what I call the law, law of the source. It's essentially the size of the source relative to the subject is what determines how soft or hard the light is. Another way of saying that is a specular or diffuse. So a good way to think of it is when the sun's out, bright and shiny and there's not a cloud in the sky, you have a very tiny little source and that source creates those amazing shadows that you see. Another way to think of it is when you have a lampshade and you take a lamp with a lampshade and you take the lampshade off, suddenly you see those really strong shadows on the wall. That's because you went from a source that was about this big to a source that was about that big. So the idea is if you want a softer light, what you need to do is make the source bigger and have it closer to the subject. If you want something that's more what we call specular or harder, where you have very distinct shadows, the idea is to make the source smaller and further away from the subject. And the one thing I'd like to add is, is if you have, say, a softbox or an umbrella or something like that, and it's very far from the subject, it's the equivalent as ha of having a much smaller source close to the subject. So it's relative. You have to think of it as the size of the source relative to the subject, it's the distance to the subject. That's, that's the first law. The second law is actually, it sounds more complicated than it really is. It's known as the inverse square law, and all it really means, it's a very simple concept, is as you move the light further away, the exposure diminishes. As you move it closer, the exposure increases. It does so at a, ver as, at a known rate. So essentially, if you have a light at five feet, when you move it to 10 feet, you lose two f-stops. It's as simple as that. The interesting part here is, is that the two laws, the first law and the second law, work together. So if you're shooting a group of people and you need to have the light cover from the front row to the back row, the best way to do that is to move the light further back because it's going to cover a greater distance. But the downside is, from the first law, is when you do that, the light becomes harder. So you always have to weigh the, work with those two laws together in that as you move the light further back, you lose exposure, but you gain depth to the light. The other way is, is that, it, meaning relative to the first law, you also create a much harsher light. So it's something just to understand in the way that light works. It's not something you can really change, it's just something to be aware of. Okay, the third law I want to talk about is what's called the, well, it's, it's, it really has to do with the angle of light and how light works. Essentially, it comes in one angle and it goes out the same angle. The best way I can explain this is probably a lot of you have shot photographs where you have a mirror or a window or something like that directly behind the, the subject. And you're standing with your camera and you shoot a picture and you look at it and there's this amazing glare hot spot in the glass behind them. And the easiest way to solve that is if you think about it, if you just move to the side, the light is going to strike that glass or that shiny sub or surface behind them and it's going to bounce out at exactly the same angle. So if you can see yourself reflected in some glass, move to the side. Once you can't see yourself anymore, you won't see the flash in it anymore. The light will still hit your subject, but it'll hit the glass and bounce the other way. Any kind of light that you ever use works on the same principle. It comes, in at the, it comes in and it exits at the same angle. So if you always remember that, those three laws pretty much govern anything that has to do with light and you can use them to your greatest advantage.